Get out. I got so much feedback on this movie, so I said, I have to check it out just to see what it's about. So when I did check it out, I saw that there were so many subliminal messages in there, whether it was physical or spiritual. So the movie kicks off with a brother walking in a, I want to say an all white neighborhood, minding his business, and he was being tailed or followed. So he ended up turning around because the car pulled him next to him following him. He ended up turning around, went down the opposite direction. And whomever was in that car got out of the car, followed him, chased him down, drugged him, put him in the trunk. Now, when I seen that scene, that scene remind me of what happened to Trayvon Martin. So this movie started off right after that with an interracial couple, which is common nowadays. But was there a hidden agenda behind it? Now, on the surface, it might have seemed innocent, but later on, it found out it wasn't. So let's look at our star athletes today, for example. Many who indulge in interracial relationships. But would these same women date them if they didn't have these multi-million dollar contracts or have a certain status? Yeah, it's things that people really don't pay attention to too much. I'm kind of... I'm paying attention to it because bit, I'm but... seeing you in those stats with the 40 <laughs> plus points and getting close to Will Chamberlain and the stats here. You're pretty close, huh? Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Now, a lot of it has to do with luck, too. So. You're a great guy. Thank and you. you're so handsome. Thank you oh so much. Oh, my goodness. I'm seriously <laughs> blushing. Okay. <laughs> thank you so much. And good luck tonight against the Nets. Thank you. All thank right. You. Well, Brian's Nike Zoom Kobe 3 is part of a four-year, $45 million endorsement deal. He signed with Nike in June of 2003. And wow, I'm looking forward to seeing him in the finals. All right, stay tuned. Money for Breakfast is on its way. We'll be right back. Nehemiah chapter 13 verse 23 through 27 In those days also saw I Jews that had married wives, wives of Ashdod, of Ammon, and of Moab And their children spake half in the speech of Ashdod And could not speak in the Jews language But according to the language of each people And I contended with them And cursed them And smote certain of them And plucked off their hair and made them swear by God, saying, Ye shall not give your daughters unto their sons, nor take their daughters unto your sons, or for yourselves. Did not Solomon king of Israel sin by these things? Yet among many nations were there no king like him, who was beloved of his God, and God made him king over all Israel. Nevertheless, even him did outlandish women cause to sin. Shall we then hearken unto you to do all this great evil, to, to transgress against our Allahim and marrying strange wives? So as you see, marrying of another nation, that is a sin. So let's continue to critique this movie, Get Out. Now the next scene was when they were stopped by the cop and the brother was asked for his ID, even though he wasn't driving. But he played it cool in which he should. Baruch chapter 3 verse 8. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity, where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse, and to be subject to payments, according to all the iniquities of our fathers, which departed from, from Yahweh our Allahim. Matthew chapter 5 verse 39. But I say unto you, that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. So that's what that understanding is about. We got to understand that we are still in captivity. So if a police officer asks you something, don't get smart, just do it. 
If you ask for your ID, don't get smart, just do it. Just understand, we are under their rulership right now. Because if we was under our own rulership, John chapter 18, verse 36. Yahweh shall answer, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then will my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Now the girlfriend and the brother finally got to the house and the brother realized her wife finally had black servants who were out of touch or disassociated. If they were slaves, they were taught to act like that. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 28. Yahweh should spike thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart or mind. Next, he went through a hypnotic state that her mom put him under by taking him to a dark place he didn't want to go, called the sunken place. This street has many avenues. So let's start with these celebrities, for example. People become celebrities because of the money and fame which is on the surface, but what's under the surface? See, they have to realize what comes with the money and fame. Your soul is on the table, physically and spiritually. Which is why many try to get out the game and can't or try to seek some spiritual guidance because of the wickedness once your soul has been signed over. Also not realizing that military tactics has been converted into the Hollywood scene and used on many celebrities. One of the tactics is MK Ultra, which is mind control. Once they see you have a certain amount of fan base, they will use this tactic so you can bring forth their agenda. We know the ones that have been through this program. Either they develop an alter ego or they go through some kind of hypnotic state while being publicized on television. The CIA is carrying out mind control on countless numbers of unwitting American victims. And he even went so far as to say the basic methods that they use in this mind control, hypnosis, drugs, and torture. Three parts of policy that they had uh, adopted there. The second one was to find a way of being able to get total control of people's minds. And that would be done by taking hypnotism out of the realm of the occult and introduce it as a new science for the benefit of mankind. I was an FBI agent for 27 and a half years. At the time of my retirement, I was the senior special agent in charge of the FBI Los Angeles Division. I have been qualified in the courts as an expert on cults and satanic ritual abuse. I have information from various sources uh, that uh, judges, law enforcement, prosecutors, attorneys, doctors, and many, many prominent individuals, including actors, actresses, professional football and baseball players, are involved in these type of activities. If you go back uh, 225 or 30 years ago, you have what we call the Illuminati that was established uh, in 1776. And the goals of the Illuminati, this is all very well documented, are to take over the world. One of the best ways of taking over the world is to control people's minds and to take over a country through the control of the minds. Uh, so what's happening in America, and based on my research and my interviews with numerous individuals, is that the uh, powers that be, the higher-ups, uh, the people in the Illuminati are using the satanic cults as a means and as a tool to condition individuals and to uh, make them victims of the mind control, MK Ultra mind control program. There's probably close to four million practicing Satanists in the United States alone based on my intelligence information. The Vietnam War was the formative experience for a generation of CIA and military intelligence personnel involved in the Phoenix program. 
They viewed the military defeat in Vietnam as a betrayal on the home front, a loss of will by domestic political enemies, not a military failure against a nationalistic revolution fought as a guerrilla war. The Phoenix program, assassinating suspected VC sympathizers in a systematic manner, worked well and is the blueprint for the current black operation targeting thousands of loyal Americans using state-of-the-art microwave and radio frequency radiation weapons. Gord, John B. Alexander, Michael Aquino, Paul Vallely, and others have built the perfect beast using selective assassination that leaves no trace. To avoid confusion, the dozens of mind control operations will be referred to generically as MKUltra. According to MKUltra documents and sources, the methodology of mind control works best when severe trauma is administered by the age of three years old. Severe trauma, such as rape, applied at the age of three, will cause the personality to split or dissociate in an attempt to shield the mind from memories of events too painful to endure. The psychiatric terms are multiple personality disorder or dissociative identity disorder and can be produced accidentally or purposefully. The Three Faces of Eve is the true story of multiple personality disorder created by childhood abuse. Psychic trauma and creation of multiple personalities was eventually codified by programmers into a standard methodology and is typically accomplished by forcing children to observe and participate in the ritual sacrifice of animals and humans and inducing further psychic trauma by the means of rape and other horrors. The trauma causes the dissociation. This functions much like the partitioning of a hard drive in a computer. The dissociative state is used as an opening to hypnotically induce an alternate shell personality. The programmer will use hypnosis and triggers to call forth the created personality, known as an alter personality. Only 20% of the general population is easily hypnotizable, but trauma at an early age makes people vulnerable to dissociation and thus easily hypnotizable. I was used in CIA black budget operations, um, many of them of a military nature. Um, I was a mind control victim um, in these same black budget operations, and uh, I was used as a propagandist by the CIA to help bring in the new world order. I was actually a media person, I still am, radio and TV and print journalism, and uh, basically they set me up through a CIA front company to propagate um, the new world order through new age propaganda. Mm -hmm. That's about the best way I can say it. And that's, uh, that's a comment I want to make. Um, a lot of this new age material that we see coming out today, um, it is an Illuminati ploy um, to bring in the new world order. Mm -hmm. It's sort of a diversionary tactic part of it. It's a way to get people to be complacent and under mass mind control. And that involves a lot of the trance channeling, um, all those sorts of things. Um, it's a way to sort of lull people into a false sense of security based on a false spirituality. CBS 2's Serene Branson is live at the Staples Center with highlights and backstage coverage we're seeing for the very first time. Serene. Well, a very, very heavy, uh, heavy divertation tonight. We had a very Darrison bite, and let's go to Terrace Chase and let's for the bit. They had the pet. Our Rock County Bureau at the Janesville Gazette. Thanks, Margo. Well, Wisconsin has officially joined 25 other states in a lawsuit against President Obama's health care reform law. Attorney General J.B. Van Hollen says Wisconsin is the latest state, including Iowa, Kansas, Maine, Ohio, and Wyoming, to join Florida's suit. The state claiming the exorcist saw Antisracho and Palais Brinritz by Health Urset. Now, uh, Defense Minister uh, McCain uh, McLeod did uh, confirm today that more than 54 18 fighter jets are spending about as much as 20 and ready to as assist the 600, uh, 100 deployed over the amount needed. Now, it did depend that how the NOLAN remerges RN while the university or the UN mi mission 
as Hall received support from all patteries in the hues of the, the Garvins uh, of today. Excuse me. Uh, I'll hand it back to you. Thank you, Mark McAllister from Japan tonight. Newly released video. <laughs> Předpokládat, že odpoledne pravdy budeme úspěšnější. A teď se pojďme podívat na to, co přinesly poslední hodiny na české, české politické scéně. I'm sorry. Wipe the drool. I was in a trance. Yeah, wipe the drool there. I know. We look at the room for me. I, I couldn't tell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to laugh. Uh, okay. okay. <laughs>35 years ago today, Elvis Presley passed away, the king of rock and roll, and as Mark Cohn says in his great song, Walking in Memphis, there's a pretty little thing waiting. In covertly recorded off-air transmissions from the Bush Clinton presidential election campaign in the 1990s, we can see that Bill Clinton was nothing more than a puppet to the puppet masters which placed him in the White House. Bill Clinton's demeanor seems to be similar to a person who is under a hypnotic trance. 
Now many things come with being a celebrity and being a mason is one of them. Which takes us to the next scene. The family guest comes to the house which appears to be a regular party but in reality the brother was being examined by all for the highest bidder. Dressed in black and white Masonic and the ones in red appear to be the higher ranking masons. Now being examined these people mention the qualities he and his people has that their people lack. Not trusting the people he kept company with, he sees another brother to help him adapt to his surroundings. Now realizing the brother he approached is not quite what he expected. In the midst of speaking to him, his handler comes to the rescue. So now the brother proceeds to leave the area and goes in the house to call his friend. His boy who's woke tells him to leave ASAP. Before the brother left, he decided to take more pics because he was a photographer. In doing that, he was put on the spot with bad company and asked about the African American experience. Not knowing how to answer that, he asked the other brother who seemed to be in a zombie state to answer that question. While the brother was answering the question, he decided to take his camera out and snap a picture of him. Flash! The flash appears to be a trigger used to wake him up from his hyp hypnotic state. So the zombie brother runs up to him and tells him to get out, leave. While doing that, his handlers rush him to a room and once seen again, he was back into a hypnotic state. This sounds familiar. Let's look at an example of a celebrity when they wake up from a hypnotic state and tries to tell people the truth. Remember, the media is used as a weapon. Right now, press, get ready to write your passive aggressive LeBron James racist comments, season four racist comments. Get ready to have a field day, press. Get ready, get ready, because the show's over. Kanye West is hospitalized today after a string of several bizarre recent incidents. Kanye West canceled his concert here in L.A. tonight just hours after ranting and then walking off the stage in Sacramento. It's a new world, Hillary Clinton! It's a new world! The hip-hop star reportedly was taken to UCLA Medical Center after a series of erratic public outbursts. West is said to be under a psychiatric hold today, which prevents him from leaving the hospital. You know why? Because y'all been lied to. Google lied to you. Facebook lied to you. You know, mental illness. Perhaps. And, and you know, we've seen unusual outbursts from Kanye in the past. But this last one, mm -hmm. this past weekend, we all really stopped to wonder if everything was okay. Because this one was... It was a 17-minute tirade, 17 minutes in a concert. That, that's like a lifetime to sit there and just rant. I've been at fest since I was, like, like out of the womb. I just, I just don't really like Kanye right now. I just lost all respect for Kanye. Rescue 41, psychiatric emergency, Moral Avenue. The LAPD says officers responded to a call of a disturbance. I am putting my career, my life, my public well standing at risk when I talk to y'all like this. The sudden medical emergency comes after several days of bizarre behavior at his concerts. The situation unfolded just hours after canceling the remaining 22 U.S. dates of his St. Pablo tour. LAPD confirmed they responded to a call at 1.20 p.m., at which point the fire department was called in. It's been reported that West tried to resist paramedics and had to be handcuffed to the stretcher. I was uncharacteristic of him, but that aside, you know, to cancel a month and a half's worth of tours when a lot of money is on the line, something is pretty wrong here. I think he 
was exhausted, just really tired. Rapper Snoop Dogg watching West Sacramento concert Saturday night where he went on a wild rant and walked off stage. I smoke weed. Weed don't make you do that. What the f is he on? There's still a lot of questions tonight about the health of rapper Kanye West. Feelings matter. Because guess what? Everybody in middle America felt a way. And they showed you how they felt. Feelings matter, bro. It's a new world. It's a new world, Barack. It's a new world, Jay-Z. These is the vibes, bro. This is the future. This is the way of thinking to make America great again. Sacramento Kings player Anthony Tolliver tweeted, This dude Kanye just stole money from 22,000 fans in 25 minutes. Craziest thing I've ever seen in entertainment. Two songs, rant, walk out. To black people, Stop focusing on racism. This world is racist, okay? Let's stop being distracted to focus on that as much. Now, at the same time, we've been tracking for a while Kanye's problems. Uh, as far back as, you know, the summer, we were talking to people who knew him well from Chicago, like Rhyme, the rapper Rhyme Fest, who worked with him on his first album and knew him before he was Kanye West, but just a kid in Chicago. And he talked about how he was losing touch with reality. And they were seeing this erratic behavior. And understand, he was at the house of Harley Pasternak, who has been his longtime trainer. He's a Hollywood um, trainer to the stars. Other folks like Common have worked with Harley, and Kanye's worked for him for a long time. So for Harley to say there's an issue, right. you know yeah, there's up. something wrong. And the fact that they had to then put him in handcuffs, that tells you something there, too. If we start at the back of the brain, we've um, we've switched off my visual cortex, so made me unable to see things. If we move a little bit forward in the brain, we've interfered with people's ability and my ability to see faces. Uh, a little bit further forward, we've uh, interfered with the ability to perform actions. Start moving your finger. <laughs> Quite odd. It's not your finger it's anymore. It's not my finger anymore. <laughs> Uh, we've interfered with the ability to um, compute with numbers. Six, seven, eight. Okay. Ooh, yeah. Yes. That's we've interfered with the ability to uh, to speak. London Bridge, London Bridge, <laughs> London Bridge is falling down. Uh -oh. uh, you think of something you can do, and we've basically interfered with it with with this machine. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So no, what's no. the problem? I don't know. I would remind people that every single morning we all awaken to a safer, freer world because of George Bush. And Nicole, I would remind you and the people of Florence that all of us awaken every single day to a freer, safer world because of George Bush. They themselves awaken every single day to a freer, safer world because of George Bush. Kanye was in the hospital for two weeks before release. Did he look the same once released? <laughs> He has blonde hair and cheeks that are swole, which appears to look like he was pumped with some kind of drug. And who knows whatever else they did to him. His first appearance after leaving the hospital, he was seen getting off an elevator, meeting up with Donald Trump. Can you say propaganda? Look at the hypnotic state he was in. He looked lost. Who's that white guy behind him that got off the elevator with, with him? And you say handler? If you pay attention, you will find many other celebrities has handlers. It's sad and hurtful to see because I personally know Kanye, but he didn't know what he was signed up for. 
you're forced to surround yourself with peeps that don't know you and don't have your best interests. And even worse than all, you begin to worship their God, Satan. Yup, somehow I knew they would put it in the movie. Just friends, just friends, and uh, he's a good man. He's been doing well. Long time. We've been friends for a long time. Life. We discussed it. I just want to take a picture right now. Many celebrities woke up to the game but are afraid to speak on it, fearing what may happen to them. Matthew chapter 10 verse 28 And fear not them which kill the body but are not able to kill the soul but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell If you go on misleading the people you will be held accountable for it either in this lifetime or the one that follows The wisdom of Solomon chapter 12 verse 23 through 27 Wherefore, whereas men have lived dissolutely and unrighteously, thou hast tormented them with their own abominations. For they went astray very far in the ways of error, and held them for gods, which even among the beasts of their enemies were despised, being deceived as children of no understanding. Therefore, unto them, as to children without the use of reason, Thou didst send a judgment to mock them. But they that would not be reformed by that correction wherein he dallied with them shall feel a judgment worthy of God. For look, for what things they grudge when they were punished, that is, for them whom they thought to be gods, not being punished in them, when they saw it, they acknowledged him to be the true God, whom before they denied to know and therefore came extreme damnation upon them. So it's funny when someone glorify and idolize a celebrity. It shows their ignorance. I commend the ones that woke up from their error, repented, and lets us know what's going on. Lauren Hill, Dave Chappelle, and Brandon T. Jackson, just to name a few. First Timothy, Chapter 6, verse 7 through 11. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drawn men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Matthew chapter 16, verse 25 and 26. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Remember, you can't serve two masters. Luke chapter 16, verse 13. No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Brenda T. Jackson found that out. Hold up, wait a minute. Y'all thought I was finished. 
See, the devil tried to get into the phones. He can never anything he want to get into, so a message won't get out. Now let's talk. Nicki Minaj, you belong to the Father. I already said Kanye West. Who else? J. Cole, you belong to God. Uh, uh, Chris Brown, you belong to the Father. All y'all belong to the Father. Y'all belong to God. I don't care what nobody say. The Father's judging this earth right now. I'm going to let y'all know that. And everybody can say whatever they want about me. I don't care. Because in order to gain it all, you got to be willing to lose it all. And that's what this generation don't understand. They want to get money, women. They don't, that stuff don't fulfill you. It don't fulfill you. I've been there, up, down, left, right, whatever. It's the same situations. So I'm calling y'all out. I want y'all to understand that you can have redemption. Nicki Minaj, uh, Chris Brown, Lil Wayne, you belong to the Father. And I don't care what anybody say about this. It's the truth, and I'm going to let it go. Lauren Hill's not crazy. Listen, y'all, these celebrities are not crazy. They're not crazy. They're not crazy. Dave Chappelle's not crazy. Lauren Hill's not crazy. These people are real, strong people who have a purpose for God. So I know y'all been looking for me. Whatever, you know, here you go. You found him. Word from the God of Israel on this Shabbat, on this Sabbath day. Either you let his people go, Are you going to have him to deal with? That's the word from the most high God of Israel and his son Christ who died for the sins of mankind. He Now he releasing the real prophets. I was the voice of reason in every movie for a reason. The reason was this moment here. This is called destiny. Now realizing what's going on, he wants to get out and leave. His girlfriend's family realized that too. So they try to keep him against his free will. He fights to get out until he was brought onto a hypnotic state to that sinking place again. Once woke, he realizes he's in a room by himself strapped onto a chair in front of a TV. The TV comes on. A blind man whom he remembered from the party which seemed to be friendly lets him know why he's there. I want what you have, that brain capacity and those eyes, he said. Now everything makes sense to the brother. His girlfriend's father is a neurosurgeon and they are organ and soul stealing. Drive by shooting is organ stealing. I'm worth $50 million and I need a kidney. And you know, kidneys are pretty sensitive. You gotta find somebody who really got the kidney that matches yours. You think I'm gonna wait till somebody die for me to get one? If I don't get one soon, I'm gonna die. So guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna pay somebody to go research people. Okay, let's go look at all the black organ donors. Let's look at all the black people who got organ donor on their driver's license, which is why I'm not a friend of that. I say, if you want to donate your organs, put it in your will. Say that if I die, this can go to my family, my relatives, my friends, or whomever. But when you put it on your license, I believe you make yourself a public target. And so what did they find? We got a guy in Los Angeles. He has the same blood type as you, same kidney type as you likely. He ain't he healthy though. He ain't likely to die no time soon. He don't know you, so he ain't gonna give you no organ for free. So guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna arrange a murder that makes it look like he was in a car accident. We're gonna arrange a murder that makes it look like he committed suicide. So the next thing you know, you coming out the gas station, boom, you get hit by a Mack truck. You dead, gone. You get taken to the funeral home. Your family come to the funeral. They don't know that before your body got laid to rest. A little hole was poked and they pulled your kidney out. A lot of people don't know, when you get arrested or even when you get convicted, a lot of times law enforcement or police will swab your mouth for DNA. And now they have your DNA record on file, they have your genetic information on file. And you have to understand with law enforcement, a lot of times they'll sell your information to tabloids and like especially celebrities, they sell their information to tabloids and magazines and news outlets all the time. So it's not a stretch to believe that they won't use your DNA or your genetic information for nefarious reasons. You my son, cops come by and inform me you've just been shot dead. You don't have jurisdiction over that body. Mm -hmm. That's the coroner. You can't get that body till the coroner release you. So we get released, we go around and pick it up, and I see all these cuts and these stitches. I just thought they was doing a retune investigation, following the family, they took your organs. Mm -hmm. I'm under all this stress, my son is dead. Now you buried now, I can't dig you up because the court got that permission. 
most of those cases is Oregon stealing. It's been known for a long time, even back in slavery times, that black organs were considered superior genetically to other folks' organs. For example, whenever there's a transplant, okay, especially when rich folks get heart transplant, liver transplant, kidney transplant, they like white, they like black organs. We had a famous case in Pennsylvania, Governor Casey, who was one of the most racist governors who ever lived back in the 19, late 80s, early 90s. He had a heart transplant. Guess who heart they gave him? A black person's heart. Down in Georgia, there was a case of an African-American 17-year-old kid who was found mysteriously dead at school. He died in the gym, they did an autopsy and they buried him. His family, they weren't satisfied with the results because they, they still wanted to know what happened to their son. They had the body exhumed, found out that his organs were missing and his body was stuffed with newspapers and people are still trying to find answers. The officials down there in Georgia, they act like they don't know what's going on. There was another case out here in California. A young African-American man was found dead in Death Valley in the, in the, in the desert. All of his organs were missing, his liver, heart, lungs, kidneys, all gone. There's a case in, in the UK recently, a Somalian girl was brought over there for organ harvesting. They found out that they were gonna harvest her organs and they stopped that. There was another case in Asian couples, they went over to Africa, they adopted a black girl, two weeks later she was dead. So these cases of organ harvesting are just going on all over the world and people are being real quiet about it. The brother breaks free, kills everyone in the house but his girlfriend. He takes the car keys and leave. He hits someone. Is it a deer? He realized it's one of the servants from the house. He puts her in the car and drives off. She wakes up from being unconscious due to the accident. You ruined everything. Can you say Stockholm Syndrome? Stockholm Syndrome is a psychological phenomenon in which hostages express empathy and have positive feelings towards their captors, sometimes to the point of defending them. There was two kinds of slaves. There was the house Negro and the field Negro. The house Negro, they lived in the house with master. They dressed pretty good. They ate good because they ate his food, what he left. <laughs> they lived in the attic or the basement but still they lived near their master. And they loved their master more than the master loved himself. They would, they would give their life to save their master's house quicker than the master would. The house Negro, if the master said, we got a good house here, the house Negro said, yeah, we got a good house here. Whenever the master said we, he said we. That's how you can tell a house Negro. If the master's, if the master's house caught on fire, the house Negro would fight harder to put the blaze out than the master would. If the master got sick, the house Negro would say, what's the matter, boss? We sick. We sick. <laughs> he identified himself with his master more than his master identified with himself. And if you came to the house Negro and said, let's run away. Let's escape. Let's separate that house negro would look at you and say man you crazy what you mean separate where is there a better house than this where can i wear better clothes than this where can i eat better food than this that was that house negro in those days he was called a house nigger and that's what we call him today because we still got some house niggers running around here This modern house Negro loves his master. He wants to live near him. He'll pay three times as much as the house is worth just to live near his master. And then brag about, I'm the only Negro out here. <laughs> I'm the only one on my job. I'm the only one in this school, you nothing but a house Negro. And if someone come to you right now and say, let's separate, you say the same thing that the house Negro said on the plantation. What you mean separate? From America? This good white man? Where you gonna get a better job than you get here? I mean, this is what you say. 
I, I ain't left nothing in Africa. That's what she said. Why, well, you left your mind in Africa. <laughs> On that same plantation, there was the field Negro. The field Negro, those were the masses. There was always more Negroes in the field than there was Negroes in the house. The Negro in the field caught hell. He ate leftovers. In the house, they ate high up on the hull. The Negro in the field didn't get nothing but what was left of the insides of the hull. They call them chitlins nowadays. <laughs> In those days, they call them what they were, guts. That's what you were, a gut eater. And some of you are all still gut eaters. The field Negro was beaten from morning till night. He lived in a shack. In a hut, he wore cast-off clothes, and he hated his master. I say he hated his master. He was intelligent. That house Negro loved his master. But that field Negro, remember, they were in the majority, and they hated his master. When the house caught on fire, he didn't try and put it out. That field Negro prayed for a wind. For a breeze. When the master got sick, the field Negro prayed that he died. If someone come to the field Negro and said, let's separate, let's run, he didn't say, where are we going? He said, any place is better than here. You got field Negroes in America today. I'm a field Negro. The masses are the field Negroes. When they see this man's house on fire, you don't hear these little Negroes talking about our government is in trouble. They say the government is in trouble. Imagine a Negro, our government, I even heard one say, our astronauts, they won't even let him near the plant. And our astronauts, our Navy, that's a Negro that's out of his mind. That's a Negro that's out of his mind. Just as the slave master in that day used Tom, the house Negro, to keep the field Negroes in check, the same old slave master today has Negroes who are nothing but modern Uncle Toms, 20th century Uncle Toms, to keep you and me in check. Now let's rewind back all the way to the brother's friend who tries to warn him. So let's look at this on a spiritual level. When I look at the servants in the house, I see them in a coma or a hypnotic state. It's the same way I look at our people when they're still celebrating pagan holidays and eating abominable foods. They're asleep. Their excuses is, well, Christmas is for the kids. I don't eat pork, but bacon. Another one is, I don't eat meat, but eat all the abominable meats in the sea. Yup, the truth hurts, don't it? And you wonder why our people can't move forward as a whole. No matter how many times you try to wake them up, they want to remain deaf, dumb, and blind. Isaiah chapter 29 verse 9 through 12 Stay yourselves and wonder cry ye out and cry they are drunken but not with wine they stagger but not with strong drink for Yahweh hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep and hath closed your eyes the prophets and your rulers the seers hath he covered and the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he said, I cannot, for it is sealed. Ezekiel, 
chapter 37, verse 3 through 5. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Yahweh, Allah, thou knowest. Again, he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of Yahweh. Thus said Yahweh, Allah, unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. This is what people like me is trying to do to you. Wake you up from your hypnosis or coma and bring you back into the true power and learn his ways. Resurrect you from your coma and help you understand that you've been lied to all your life. Matthew chapter 22, verse 31 and 32. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have ye not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Just know this, Yahweh or Jesus, is the Word of God. He's the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. He's the whole book, he's the Bible. John chapter 11 verse 25 Yahweh said unto her I am the resurrection and the life he that believeth in me though he were dead yet shall he live why were all the servants black in this movie get out why are white celebrities adopting black children I don't know about you but I don't like it it does something to my psyche. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. What do they want with our children? Or what are they doing to our children? Are they putting them into a hypnotic state and turning them into slaves or harvesting their organs? I will let you think on it. So the narrative of black people in the United States was, you know, you came from these primitive, savage people who had no history and everything you are, we made you. Strip the African of his knowledge of himself. You can then replace that knowledge with any falsification of consciousness you desire. Once you take from me my knowledge of myself, you can then tell me those lies. To get someone to actually think that someone else is inferior, you have to raise that type of mentality to a religious level. America has done all of these terrible things to black people, and then they complain when we do it to ourselves. We're mirroring what they have always done to us since we got off those boats. It's easy to sit up somewhere and talk with black people about black people. But it's not so easy to have to sit up and look at white people's face and talk to them about white people. Now that's what I know. See, white ain't a color, it's an attitude. And you got to have big bucks to be an attitude. My mom used to say, you darker, work harder. But you, the darker you are, the harder you have to work, the smarter you have to be. Folks were breastfed on racism. Breastfed on it. If you're talking about a problem in the world and you're not dealing with white supremacy, you ain't talking about the problem. There's never been a real dialogue in America about race because whenever we start to talk about race, the conversation will venture into well, what's wrong with black people. White people did whatever they wanted to do to black people. So what are the rules? Deuteronomy chapter six, verse four. Shema Yashra'ala Yahweh Alahayam Aka Adana. Shema Yashra'ala Yahweh Alahayam Aka Adana. Shema Yashra'ala Yahweh Alahayam Aka Adana. I want to give all praise to Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shah. Shalom.